it's becoming more and more difficult to know what you can and can't trust on the internet. There's a heap of AI-generated content that's flooding social media, a wave of bot comments spreading misinformation, deceitful marketing tactics being employed by companies, and a generation of product reviewers that are being heavily influenced by external sources. It's becoming a real problem, because the internet is where most people go to seek out information, educate themselves on a topic, and crowdsource opinions before they formulate their own. But if you don't know what's real and what's not, there's a good chance you'll draw conclusions based on false pretenses. This is becoming increasingly evident in the realm of 3D printer reviews. As reviewers, our job is to communicate the positive and negative attributes of our product, so you, as a viewer, can formulate an informed opinion on whether or not the product is good and whether you'd like to spend your hard-earned money on it. As a consumer, it's your prerogative to seek out as much information as you can before making a purchasing decision. It's not enough just to read the product specs or look at the marketing material from the manufacturer, because this rarely reflects the actual usage experience of the product. So many people turn to YouTube to seek out opinions from what should be an objective third party. They watch the video, take note of the pros and cons, then go to the comments section to see what the consensus is. But what if the content isn't objective? Well, someone in the comments will usually call that out, so at least you know you may not be hearing the full truth. But what if the comments do nothing but reaffirm the biases? Or worse yet, discredit any legitimate concerns, and instead sing the praises of a flawed product? If that's the case, it might be because the comments weren't left by other viewers, but rather the company whose product the review concerns, or an army of bots that work on their behalf. If this situation sounds familiar, it might be because you were privy to the ongoing surrounding the launch of the FL Sun S1. FL Sun put some outrageous claims in their marketing, which were quickly discredited by any reputable reviewers. In turn, a subset of those reviewers had their comment section flooded by bots, explaining away any shortcomings of the product. Most notably, James from Cloud42. He put out a video addressing the situation, calling out FL Sun for deceitful practices. So why does this matter, and why are we talking about it today? Well, FL Sun just released a new printer, the T1 Pro. It's a successor to the T1 that was only just released a short while ago. What makes it Pro, you ask? Well, they made it quieter, with a new fan, and upgraded the motherboard to fix some of the surface artifacts that were previously present. So that's all well and good. They've taken feedback from their user base and applied it to make the product better. But while they've learned some lessons in product design, the marketing department still appears to be up to their old tricks. This short from the next layer showcasing the T1 Pro has a variety of comments that are highly suspicious. According to one commenter, Ethel Sun will change history. And apparently 17 people agree with him, including this commenter that left a reply saying so. This is just one example of multiple comments that were left on this one video singing the praises of FL Sun and the T1. So it seems that rather than learning their lesson after they got caught with their hand in the cookie jar, they've doubled down, moving on from bot comments to bot replies and bot likes. For an informed viewer like me, I see these as nothing more than a petty attempt to establish a false narrative of positive press. But to a regular consumer, especially someone new to the hobby, there's a real risk that they'll take these comments at face value and genuinely have their opinion be swayed. I think we can agree this is a real problem. It starts with Ethel Sun, but if it's effective for them, why wouldn't other companies do it too? So that's a bad situation. But there's a deeper issue that originates with the content itself, not just the comment section. Ethel Sun reached out to me and asked if I was interested in reviewing the T1 Pro. They sent over a lengthy contract document that I needed to sign enforcing certain terms and conditions. These included, one, review a video prior to posting. The content could only be published after approval, and if not approved, revisions needed to be made before resubmission. Imagine putting all of the effort required to produce a decent, honest review, only to be told that you can't publish it because your findings aren't favorable. Two, content rights and usage. By agreeing to the review, you were granting FL Sun a royalty-free worldwide license to use reproduce and redistribute the content. By agreeing to this, you're putting your reputation at stake. They could easily take your honest review, edit out any critiques, 
and use it in their marketing material, making you look like a shill. What's even more problematic is this sentence in the body of the email. In addition, I would like to kindly remind you that we hope this review is relatively positive. We can pay you a cooperation fee for this. We highly appreciate your channel and respect your decision. So needless to say, I couldn't agree to do the review under those terms. When I push back on this, this is what I was told. We have specific promotional goals that require the content to be more controlled. And unfortunately, this means we won't be moving forward with the collaboration. So you won't be seeing a review of the FLSUN T1 Pro on my channel. And for any reviews you do watch, I encourage you to be highly skeptical. But the issue of biases in reviews is bigger than just FLSUN. As reviewers, we receive products for free in exchange for making videos. Given that, it's impossible to be completely unbiased. Naturally, there's an inclination to sugarcoat or explain away any negative findings, so as to not permanently damage the relationship with the brand. You know what they say, don't bite the hand that feeds. Now, there are some established reviewers that do a great job of striking the balance between overt positivity and brutal honesty. But for smaller channels that are new to the space, it can be difficult to walk this line. When you're first contacted by a brand and offered a free printer, it's incredibly exciting but it's all too easy to get caught up in the excitement and produce a piece of content that is overwhelmingly positive, even when the product has shortcomings. You'd be surprised how early on in a YouTuber's journey they start getting contacted by brands. One video that performs well is enough to have multiple emails in your inbox, even if you don't have that many subscribers. I think I had maybe around 1,000 when I was first contacted by an affiliate marketing company on behalf of Cheaty Tech offering to send me the XSmart 3. Prior to that, I was producing videos on my own terms, without any obligations to a third party. But as problematic as it can be to only consume content from young, impressionable channels, there's also an issue with only relying on content from established channels. The review scene is a rat race. There's always a rush to be among the first to post. A reviewer might spend only one or two weeks with a printer before publishing the review any longer and they'll miss the sweet spot for maximum views when the printer is still new and exciting. This means that many flaws get overlooked, especially those that only start to appear after extended use. Take for example the Chidi Plus 4. Many reviews were posted on day one of its release, but since then many issues have come to light. There's issues with the bearings in the tool head, with the hot end being prone to clogging, and a potential fire hazard with the chamber heater relay all things that the early reviewers weren't aware of because they just hadn't put enough hours on the machine. Unfortunately, videos can't easily be edited after posting. So if you're seeking out a review of the Plus 4 today, you'll still be served the same overwhelmingly positive ones. The established channels have already moved on to the next big thing. It's usually the smaller channels with lower production value that put out update videos explaining their new findings. I'm working on my own review of the Chidi Plus 4 that I hope to publish soon but I keep seeing new reports of issues, so I've had to go back and edit my script multiple times. Eventually, I'll just need to post it and move on. But that will be a snapshot in time. Even if I give it a thumbs up now, my opinion might change down the line. And therein lies the issue with video reviews. So it's a multifaceted problem. Even a decent, honest review might not be factual. We all make mistakes. We all overlook things. And sometimes things change. The best we can do as content creators is try to be honest and disclose our biases. The best you can do as a viewer is to consume content with a healthy dose of skepticism. Don't always believe everything you see or hear. And as a community, we need to call manufacturers out when they lie in their marketing material or otherwise participate in shady practices. But I'd love to know what your opinion is on this whole situation. Let me know in the comments down below, and I hope to see you there. Mr. Roboto. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss my future videos. My name is Taylor, this is YG Kids 3D, and until next time, happy 3D printing.